I'll keep Elizabeth. First item on the agenda, the minutes of the previous meeting of May 16th, year 2000. Comments or questions from board members? I move they be adopted. <coughs> Second. Thank you, Nancy. Steve? And moved and seconded that they be adopted as written. Any further comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please. It is unanimous. Correspondence received this week a letter from M. Cook in regards to Cape Woods, memorandum from Conservation Commission and their members in regards to Zeb Code, Hockage Subdivision Amendment, letter from the Army Corps of Engineers in regards to Whaleback Ridge Subdivision. Memorandum of Fire Chief McGoldrick in regards to the Wellback Ridge subdivision. Letter from Town Attorney in regards to Edgewood Road acceptance. Press release from PACS in regards to a regional transportation plan. On the podium tonight, a letter from Bruce Smith, our code enforcement officer, in regards to the septic system design for the Wellback Ridge subdivision. And a letter with two attachments from Tui Associates in regards to the Cape Wood subdivisions in light of proposed new garage additions on up to six units. Any comments from the board in regards to correspondence received for this meeting? Hearing none, we have two items on the consent agenda, one being the Cape Wood subdivision amendments, two being the St. Albans Church site plan amendment. Uh, does the board wish to take the consent agenda as a whole to take these individually? There are concerned members of the public here this evening. I would only recommend the board members that we take them individually. I'd recommend individually. Okay. First on the agenda, Cape Woods subdivision amendments. Cape Woods Condominium Association is requesting a revision to the previously approved Cape Woods subdivision located on Cape Woods Drive to allow units one, two, and 19 through number 22 to add a second garage space, section 16-2-5, amendment to a previously approved subdivision. If the applicant could come forward to the podium or their representative and uh, offer a brief summarization of the plan. Yeah, I have a presentation. Where's the best place to put the easel here? Right in front of the podium. I believe the camera can pick it up. And sir, could you also take a moment to identify yourself, please? Yes, my name is David Titcombe. I'm from Titcombe Associates, and I'm here on behalf of the Cape Woods Condominium Association. Um, what we're proposing is, as you said, to add an uh, additional garage unit to the existing units. Currently on units 1 through 2 and 19 through 22, there's a one-bay garage attached on each one of those units. Uh, what the applicants are doing is, uh, is requesting approval for the opportunity, not necessarily to be built, to add another garage unit to each one of those. Um, and I understand there's been some questions about drainage, and I think that the letter from, that you have in front of you from John Tui addresses those concerns, uh, that the addition of the additional garage unit would be negligible to the, any sort of drainage impact. And with that, I'll entertain any questions that the board may have. Maureen, do you have any comments? No. Okay. Comments from board members? <laughs> yes, Steve. <clears throat> Would you make a motion? Go right ahead. Motion for the board to consider finding for fact. Number one, Cape Woods Condominium Association is requesting amendments to the previously approved subdivision located on Cape Woods Drive to add an additional one-car garage. The existing one-car garage is attached to units 1, 2, and 19 through 22, which requires approval under section 16-2-5. Number two, the application substantially complies with the requirements of 
2-5 amendments to a previously approved subdivision plans. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the fact that presented the application of Cape Woods Condominium Association, for amendments to the previously approved subdivision located on Cape Woods Drive, add an additional one-car garage to the existing one-car garages attached to units 1, 2, and 19 through 22 be approved. Is there second. a second? Thank you. Nancy, you had your hand up earlier. Did you have a comment? Or? Well, I, I was uh, just going to um, be sure I, I understood. Uh, are all the people, the six people involved, going to build the garage, or is it a choice thing? Oh. <clears throat> The way we have it on there is that on the plan we've shown it need not be built, so it's just the option that if one wanted to add a garage unit to their unit, then they could. Um, I don't know what the actual intentions are of each one of the um, properties. They Thank have the you. opportunity. Thank you. <coughs> yes, David. Uh, we we have in our packet tonight a a letter from us engineer in the town that comments a little bit about the setback and how it complies with the standard. Have you reviewed these to make sure that it doesn't affect the setback that was originally approved? Right. Uh, there were no special provisions, as I recall, from the original approval. Uh, I think the concern was the setback from the buffer line, but that the line around the buffer line was never intended to be a property line. It was intended to be a buffer line. And it's my interpretation that the property line setback should be from the property line, which would be well in excess of, it would be in excess of 50 feet if that's what the minimum is of a buffer. What about the setback from the street? Was that a, Maureen, is that a requirement originally? Um, this was, at the time, it was a private road. So there was no specific setback. It was just a driveway into Cape Woods. Um, now there would be, I believe, a 20-foot setback for the garages. From the front line? From the right-of-way of the road, yeah. Further discussion before we vote on the motion? I have no. I, just looking at the plans, I don't think it interferes with that 20 feet. Doesn't seem to be anything there that would be close enough to affect that <coughs> present. I have no further comment. A motion has been made and seconded. If there is no further discussion, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. It is a public hearing is has not been scheduled, madam. If you have a comment, I suggest that you write to the town planner. Public comments are not being solicited at this time this evening. We did, however, receive your correspondence and did review it, and it is part of the meeting packet. No, ma'am. Absolutely, and it will become part of the application. Second item on the consent agenda is the St. Albans Church site plant amendment. I don't believe the applicant is here, which isn't required. Discussions and motions to be made by the board on this matter? <coughs> Steve? Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented the application of St. Albans Church to reduce the footprint on the subway provided the previously approved addition located at 885 Shore Road be approved as a consent agenda item. Second. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Mr. Chairman, 
Joe? As with the workshop, I have to uh, abstain based on my uh, membership in that congregation. Thank you, John. Further comments, questions from the board? Seeing none, we'll move the motion. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. With one abstention. Thank you. Before we get on to new business, I have one public announcement to make. As you notice, the chair to my left is empty. The planning board has a need for a recording secretary. Everybody is listening at home and would like a very nice, low-paying job. I suggest you contact Maureen O'Mara, our town planner. <laughs> First item under new business. Bluestone Quarry Earth Materials Permit Renewal. Leland P. Murray, representing Bluestone Corporation, is requesting renewal of an earth materials permit for the Bluestone Quarry located at 1019 Sawyer Road, section 19-8-5, earth materials permit, a public hearing. <coughs> we have to first find out, Jim, if you have any friends in town. I'd like to begin, before I ask Mr. Murray to come to the podium, to ask Maureen to explain very briefly to the new members on the board uh, what this annual permit is. Uh, the remaining members of the board, I myself, I think have voted on this application seven times. I think, Steve, you've probably voted on it nine. The tenth. Tenth. So we're well versed in what this application means, but Maureen, if you could just fill in our new members, please. Certainly. Uh, the town has regulations in our zoning ordinance that require that if you're going to be removing large amounts of topsoil or other types of earth materials such as rock or sand, that you have to get an earth materials permit. You need to submit a plan. You need to provide for adequate buffering, um, control the kind of activities that go on the site, um, other types of requirements like that. Uh, once you receive the permit, when you have an ongoing concern such as the bluestone quarry, uh, the ordinance requires that you annually renew your permit. Uh, so Mr. Murray comes to us very graciously every year and shows us a plan that identifies the area that he will be excavating for the year. Uh, I may also want to point out to the board that uh, there has been a practice on the board not to require the applicant to go to the expense of a full survey every year. Um, so what the applicant does is usually build on uh, the prior year's plan. Um, there has been an informal practice of every five years getting a up-to-date survey done. Um, if this is going to be the expectation of the board for next year, now might be a good time to let the applicant know about that. Hearing all that, Jim, would you like to come to the podium? And <clears throat> First of all, if I apply for the secretary job, we have to abstain from the annual permit vote. Yes, you would. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Jim Murray. I'm president of Bluestone Corporation, um, owner of the quarry located at 1019 Sawyer Road, Cape Elizabeth, <clears throat> and requesting the um, annual permit. I've walked the perimeter, all the trespassing, uh, no trespassing signs are up, the fence is intact, and to my knowledge, there have been no complaints from the neighbors or anybody else. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Questions to Mr. Murray from the board? Just to quote Maureen, are these the same conditions that have been in effect 
previously that are proposed um, here? In the proposed motion? Yes. Yeah, they're, they're a little abrupt. They used, there used to be a lot more of them before 1997, and when we adopted the new zoning ordinance in 1997, we were able to make some changes to the earth material permit process so that the number of conditions reduced. But it is the same thing you do every year with, with the dates changed. At this time, I will open the public hearing that is scheduled on this matter. Public hearing is now open in regards to the Bluestone Quarry Earth Materials Permit. If you would like to speak on this matter, please come forward to the podium. Seeing no one rising, the public hearing is now closed. Comments or questions for board members? Yes, Karen. Hi. Mr. Murray, you state in your letter that you submitted with your application that you removed roughly 1,000 cubic yards of stone during 1999 and plan to continue operation throughout 2000. Is that, is that at the same 1,000 cubic yard level? Uh, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Okay. Permitted for 10,000 cubic yards, I believe. Removed. Thank you. Would anyone like to volunteer to read this two-page motion? Nancy, go right ahead. Uh, uh, question. We have a question first. No. Um, Jim, uh, how many times a year would you say you blast? At the quarry? Yeah. Well, it all depends on uh, the uh, demand. I think last year we blasted uh, 12, 15 times. Try to do it. Uh, and do you do it for a whole day? Or? No, we usually drill for a couple, three days and, and uh, take different shots. I try to shelf it down to keep the vibration down, make sure there's no fire off. <coughs> so, normally it's a day or two for drilling, day or two for blasting. Thank you. <coughs> Steve, it's your turn. <clears throat> Since no one else is uh, stepping up at the plate. <clears throat> okay. Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. <clears throat> Number one, the applicant operates Bluestone Quarry located at 10 1019 Sawyer Road. Number two, this facility requires a special permit to remove, remove earth under materials. Excuse me. Remove earth materials under section 19 8 5. Number three, the facility will conduct blasting and transport operations which could endanger the public health, safety, and welfare. Number four, the applicant has substantially addressed the earth material permit requirements in section 19 8 5 D. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Leland Murray for renewal of an earth materials permit at Bluestone Quarry located at 1019 Sawyer Road be granted by the Planning Board for a one-year period beginning June 20, 2000, ending with a regular June 2001 meeting of the Planning Board subject to the following conditions. Number one, the applicant shall re maintain a fence at least three feet in height around the perimeter of, of the site. Number two, the applicant shall maintain comprehensive general public liability insurance with coverage not less than $500,000 per person and per occurrence for bodily injury or death, not less than $100,000 per occurrence for property damage. Number three, no operation shall be conducted at the quarry on Saturdays, Sundays, or holidays except that stone may be loaded and trucked from the site on Saturdays. No machinery or equipment shall be operated before 8 a.m. or after 6 p.m. on any day, except the loading of trucks shall only take place between 7.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Number four, all blasting shall be performed by or under the direct personal supervision of a person qualified, experienced, and regularly engaged in such work, and shall be done in a manner which will not endanger the health or safety of any person or damage any real or personal property on or off the quarry site. Representatives of the applicant shall be present at the time of the blasting operation. <clears throat> Number five, the applicant shall keep accurate records of any and all blasting operations, including times and dates of such operations, and information on size and placement of all charges. The schedule of any 
executed before any blasting and drilling shall be submitted by the applicant to the public safety dispatcher at least seven days prior to the commencement of the work. The schedule shall include the name of the drilling and or blasting subcontractor who perform the work and a certificate of insurance for such subcontracting. Drilling and blasting shall be scheduled for no more than one half day at a time. Number six, the applicant shall make a reasonable attempt to notify Cape Elizabeth residents along Sawyer Road and Stillman Street in the vicinity of the quarry prior to any blasting operation. Number seven, no more than 10,000 cubic yards of material shall be removed during the term of this permit. Number eight, if the code enforcement officer finds at any time that the health, safety, or welfare of area residents or property is threatened by quarry operations, he or she is authorized and directed to order that all work at the site be suspended immediately and to require that the operations be resumed only after further action by the planning board. Questions concerning the motion? David, a second? Second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. It is unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Thank you, Rita. Next item on the agenda is the Partridge Zepco Subdivision Amendment. <clears throat> John and Ann Partridge are requesting an amendment to the previously approved Zebco subdivision to move the driveway for lot one from Becky's Cove Road to Shore Road <laughs> to section 16-2-5, an amendment to a previously approved subdivision. Amy Bell Siegel. I'm a landscape architect with Terrence J. DeWan Associates. Um, with me here tonight is Ann and John Partridge from 1180 Shore Road. And we're here with an application for an amendment to a previous, previously approved subdivision, Subco. And um, the subdivision itself was approved on June 16, 1998. Our office did that work for Anastas NATO. Uh, Ann and John now own lot one subdivision. Our amendment, um, calling it, is uh, would allow Ann and John to build a driveway or have access off the shore road uh, versus Becky's Cove Road, which was shown conceptually during the planning board approval process a couple years ago. Uh, we, you know, went to the work workshop session and discussed with you whether or not we felt that. You know whether or not the cartridges had the ability to do this already, or whether or not we had to go before the board. And um, through your legal uh, counsel, from Mike Hill, he decided that the board did have the ability to, you know, have us come back before you and, and look at this again. Um, so here we are. Uh, originally, uh, Anastas Nado uh, design had us design the subdivision. Um, and looking at um, access points for lot one, they want us to look at the existing Becky's Cove Road, which is long, to Shore Road, Becky's Cove Road comes down here, accesses two lots plus this one. And um, they wanted us to make sure that if the future lot owner wanted to use that road, that it would be acceptable to the town, that it would meet the you know, fire standards um, and access standards for um, and it would be the intersection of Shore Road. We did that. We got the site distances. Um, we uh, got recommendations from Fire Chief on doing some additional gravel along the intersection. Uh, also, you know, going through that process, Peter was very careful in making sure that access to Shore Road from 4 Lot 1 
wouldn't be prohibited. So, I mean, obviously knowing that Lot 2 would have to come off of Shore Road directly, but Lot 1, he, wanted, he still wanted to be able to give the lot owners the ability to do that. The, uh, the recorded deed for, well, let me back up a second. As we went through the process, the planning board um, recognized the visual, or the aesthetic appeal of that field, and they wanted to protect that or acknowledge that it was visually important. And, and the way that it was approved was with an open space uh, covenant, you know, restrictive covenant along that area that's shaded in this area, which is approximately 40 feet deep, which goes the entire length of Shore Road for the subdivision. Cross lot one, cross lot two. The, the original, this is the sign plat. That note reads up on top, open space, certain developmental restrictions apply to the dot shaded area along Shore Road, which contain 0.2 acres or more of area per lot. See D covenant. The recorded deed for lot one, um, fourth paragraph, reads as such. With respect to that portion of lot one, which is labeled open space on the above reference plan, the following restrictions shall apply. No tree or shrub shall be removed except to allow for access to the parcel, for utility installation, or to eliminate a dangerous condition that threatens public health or safety. This provision shall not preclude management of the open space in accordance with good landscape management practices designed to preserve and enhance the natural beauty of the open space. <coughs> so that was in the recorded deed. Um, you know, John and Ann bought the slot with the idea that they would be able to do a driveway off of Shore Road, but it wasn't prohibited um, in the recorded subdivision plat. The conflict, I think, that has arisen is due to primarily what we showed on our site plan through the approval process. And this was the rendering that we had brought in and we had showed a conceptual driveway coming off of like, East Cove Road, um, showing conceptual locations for the houses and the driveways. Then we did put a note on the site plan that reads conceptual house and driveway locations, best management practices, BMPs, to be used in site development. We had located the site distances on this plan um, it to show that we had ample site distance to the west and east from Becky's Cove Road, as well as where we were proposing Lot 2 access to be from. So as that as a background, that's how we're sort of approaching this now. Um, we, we acknowledge that, you know, that this, this is the way we showed it, um, but we, that wasn't the only option that was out there. We showed that because Peter thought, well, you know, it's possible that someone, if they bought that lot, they may want to reduce the cost of building a driveway and come off an existing access road. So that's the way we, we showed it. Um, the driveway, as we're proposing it now, um, would come off of Shore Road approximately 94 feet from the center line of Becky's Cove Road here to the center line of our road, and approximately 166 feet from the existing um, pullout for lot two. We're not exactly sure if that's where the driveway is going to be. We assume it's going to be close to that. They haven't built a home on lot two yet. So it's approximately 166 feet from there. We measured site distance. Um, we had, from, the from, from Becky's Cove Road, we had 665 feet heading west, 790 heading east. The proposed driveway has 760 going west and 600 going east, and then we had lot two. So those measurements are still in excess of what is required for a 30 mile per hour shore road in this area, which would be 300 feet. The driveway itself, as we're proposing it, is 14 feet wide. It would um, require about 22, approximately 22 feet of vegetation clearance, knowing that you'd have 14 feet and you have you know, clearing on either side to provide sight distance and, you know, keep the vegetation from being right over the road. And um, at, when you're out there, you'll, there, you'll notice that there is a uh, new water service stub line and a leach field right there and a small clearing and a few pin cherries or some honeysuckle or some other shrub material in this area right along Shore Road. We're proposing to have a driveway access um, just to the west of that of a tree, small tree vegetation, 
So we would be removing the shrub vegetation only. The driveway would come in and come along the edge of the field. This is the existing tree line. We wouldn't be disturbing any trees along this edge. And we would hug you know, that edge as much as possible without wanting to um, damage the roots of the trees. And come along the edge here and access into the drive, the turnaround here in the house. This is the existing house layout. This is the existing access that they've been using through construction. The uh, package that we received from Maureen had some comments from the town engineer, uh, Conservation Commission, and others, and I'd like to just address some of those issues, if that's okay. Go right ahead, Amy. Um, the engineer had uh, mentioned requesting, or that technically, uh, in other cases, you've, you've requested an 18 foot wide road versus a 14 foot wide road. Um, though it seems ex excessive here for a single, a single driveway, and we do have fire turnaround at the access, for, you know, ample for a fire truck, um, you know, 14 feet wide is what we're proposing now. If, you know, if we need to, we could increase that and have gravel shoulders that are loamed over, but we would prefer to keep that to a minimum as to not disturb more of the field. Um, <laughs> the surface of the, of the driveway will either be gravel or a chip steel surface, which would be over asphalt. So we have decided, you know, the, the general concept for this driveway is to have it be as low profile as possible. We'd probably be putting a culvert along the road here. I'm pretty sure we do need one. Um, Steve had mentioned that he thought another one would be required, and there will be one down here by this, this wetland, up by the turnaround. That was, you know, we were already planning on doing that, so I didn't, I didn't mention that in the cover letter. But there, so there would be possibly two, one there if we need it, and one here. There isn't a lot of drainage on that by the road, but maybe it's warranted. Um, of course, we would put silt fencing in to protect this wetland along here. Um, the area where the existing gravel is now would be removed. All the gravel would be removed. It would be loamed and seeded. And uh, Steve had some uh, uh, concerns or questions about notes on the plan, and I guess I just need to clarify. Uh, he was referring to this note here. It's an existing water connection, and that is a new water connection that was put in for the lot. And he also referred to this uh, leach bed with the topography showing a mound, which that is there. Um, during the subdivision, we had five test pits that were located down here with the intention of putting a septic system there. When they went to install it, it wasn't adequate, so they had to put it out here and build it up in order to get, the, get what they needed. So that's what that topography is. We're locating the driveway just to the west of that as to not disturb the, le the leach field and obviously not in effect in, um, impact the water service. So that's just a clarification on Steve's confusion there. Um, with the Conservation Commission's memo, um, you know, we, we agree that this field is beautiful and um, that's one of the things that attracted partridges to this lot. Um, and, we can, and we understand, you know, the vegetation and, and the reason be behind you know, wanting to have that open space and preserving that vegetation along the road. Uh, partridges, partridges would be more than willing to you know, revegetate the area that was cleared for the water service, um, lying in there, you know, put some more vegetation in there, as well as uh, right along, you know, the access point where they had to uh, put some gravel in to make sure they have, they have a better turning radius for uh, the fire vehicles in there, and they would be more than willing to add some more vegetation there as well. And going back to this, uh, this Becky's Cove Road, I think that there's there's three main reasons why the partridges really want to do this. The first one, primary one, is safety. They're, you know, they've been driving on this road now for a couple of years and have had you know, construction vehicles going through, delivery trucks and all those things. And you know, this acute angle, that 40 degree angle, is really difficult to negotiate, even with you know, the gravel in there. It, they don't feel that that is a safe access point. It doesn't hit the road at a 90 degree angle. Um, you have to really come to a full stop along here and really turn and negotiate, you know, that whole, that um, tight corner. And, you know, more than one person has mentioned this to them, um, the contractor working for them, uh, Nassus Nado, has written a letter, which I'm thinking the board got a copy of, I'm not sure, um, expressing his concern for that tight radius. The driveway they were proposing would hit Shore Road in a 90 degree angle. So, so that would be safer, it would have, you know, it has ample sight distance, and it would, you know, give, the person driving, the ability to negotiate that turn easier. And we feel it's easier for emergency vehicles, ambulance, delivery trucks, all those things that would need, you know, 
to get in there fast. You know, with a volunteer fire department, we may not be going down this road all the time. You know, it would be, we want to make that as safe as possible to get to the house. Um, the second reason why they would like to have this driveway is to have, um, you know, more control over their own access road. This access road right now is owned by um, Frank and Nancy Strout. It's 10 to 12 feet wide. Um, it's a gravel surface. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of maintenance issues with that. Um, you know, they would prefer to be able to have a road that they could control, um, controlling its maintenance and controlling, you know, its the level of the gravel and all those good things that go into you know, gravel or driveway roads, just all those maintenance issues. They'd much prefer to have uh, full control over that. And the third one, which was, you know, relates to safety, is just having that easier access point, which is more like with the delivery trucks and things like that. It's just having it be easier turn. Um, you know, they have children that are driving and they would much prefer to have it be as safe as possible. So with that general information, I can answer any specific questions right now. Um, I don't know if Anna, John, you had any other comments you wanted to get at this point and we can wait. Yeah, I'd like to, I, mean, I, I just want to make sure that... Mr. Partridge, just for the record, uh, if you could identify yourself, please. John Parker. Thank you. I live at 1180 Shore Road. Um, I just want to make sure that you understand how we, we view this lot. We bought this lot because of this open field. Uh, our intent, because we have young children, is to have lots of young children playing in this field. We're not going to do anything that's going to impair our ability to use this field for our kids. That's why we bought this lot. In terms of having you know, the community be able to aesthetically look at the lot, today when you drive by, you can't see it because this con conservation area is so high, you can't see it. And I would like to be able to, to, to continue to maintain this area, of cons you know, this area of conservation, but also let people be able to take it take advantage of the aesthetics of this lot. And when this was original, when the lot was originally uh, approved, they had a septic tank here, the leach hill, I guess it's called here. For me to have put that in, I would have had to have cut down between 10 and 15 trees. Instead, I had to put it up, way up in the corner here, which cost me a lot of money. But I didn't want to destroy the tree. So I'm not looking to do something that is going to destroy the aesthetics of this field or this lot. This is where I live. And I'm willing to invest the money to make sure that we maintain it that way. And there is a safety issue about this, about this road. I mean, it is almost equivalent to having to make a U-turn. And again, we have children, we have two children that drive. And so I'm very concerned about that. And the speed limit along Shore Road is 35 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour. A lot of people don't drive that, at, that, at that speed. So when you come and almost have to come to a complete stop to negotiate this, because about 90% of the time we're coming from, uh, from uh, 77, we've got to come and make this turn. And I'm concerned about that, particularly with my kids. So I don't know if you Anna, want to say anything. Um, well, that's my, my, my primary concern as well. Um, I know. Uh, I'm Ann Partridge, and I, I guess I just want to reiterate what's been said, and maybe this is redundant, but um, as the mother and also having to negotiate this, I think initially when we first purchased it, it, it wasn't the first thing we looked at, but having driven it now and now that we're residing in, in this at 1180 Shore Road, it's become more and more of an issue. Um, my husband said he witnessed this evening a near accident where somebody, we have, as we've indicated, we had to enlarge a portion of the entrance to the existing now Becky's Cove and again we did that at our expense and we were willing to do that for the safety. But now consequently I've found numerous cars sort of parking themselves there. I don't know if they're trying to get a view of the house or the ocean or what they're doing. But what happens is, and this happened tonight, there was a car sort of parked there and then John you can probably tell this better but you were coming out. He then, to avoid a confrontation, started backing out onto Shore Road. Well then, in doing that, that was obviously not a very safe thing to do and didn't look carefully and there was a car coming. This happens on a daily basis, not that particular issue, but this 
this maneuvering and getting in and out is, is very difficult. So that's the primary issue. And then as we've stated again, we want to do everything to um, keep this conservation area, you know, we want to make it as, as aesthetically pleasing for us as well as the, the viewing community. And we're, we're, we're happy to be re residents of Cape Elizabeth and we, we really would like to abide by all the, the, um, the rules and, and, and the conservation issues. So I think that's all I have to say right now. Thank you, Mrs. Pat. The board has an administrative question that we need to answer before we can continue on to general discussion. Uh, is there a majority of the board that desires to hold a public hearing on this matter or to schedule a site visit? It appears all of our questions have been answered in workshop. That taken care of. We'll open the matter for discussion. Uh, first, do you have any questions of Amy? Well, she's at the podium. <coughs> Go ahead, Karen. Amy, have you had the fire chief out to look at the driveway? If he typically recommends an 18-foot width, there must be a reason. Um, uh, we haven't had a fire chief out to look at the proposed driveway location. Um, the 18-foot width, I know, is standard for, uh, you know, I know with access permit waivers or um, things like with longer driveways, they like to have, you know, 18 feet wide of gravel and then low on the shoulder, so there's two feet of loam on either side. So in essence, it looks like 14 feet wide. It has, you know, stable shoulders. That's sort of a standard requirement. Um, what Steve says here. As a follow-up to that, Amy, did the fire chief approve the original turnaround down by the house? At, he must have at the original subdivision approval. Down here? Yes. Uh, well, we had a conceptual one. Um, we, we knew um, in planning for the house that we would have to have one that would have you know, a 60 foot diameter, mm -hmm. outside okay. diameter, turnaround. Yeah. So to answer your question, I haven't, we have, and he hasn't looked at this specific location, um, but in the standard, you know, it's, it's a typical request by the fire chief to have that shoulder. I mean, I know he tries to get, you know, the best driveway he can get. But he, but he did look at the, at Becky's code. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. not as wide as no, no, again, I mean, he, approved, he approved Becky's Cove Road as access for this lot, and that, like I said, is somewhere between 10 to 12 feet wide. Um, he re requested that additional gravel be put on this, this turning corner so that the ladder truck could swing up. So and that's what they have. They have done that to um, you know, in improve that situation, but this road itself is, is far beneath the standards they want. So a 14 foot wide you know, driveway in an open field is much improved than this with all the tree canopy and all of Maureen, as a process matter, when the public works director issues the permit, will he seek input from the fire chief as to the adequacy of the width? <coughs> no. All the, the, the fire, excuse me, the public works director issues a uh, standard issuance of street opening permits or curb cut <coughs> permits uh, for any new property. He basically looks at site distance. <coughs> One way to handle it, Karen, is for yourself to make a condition to the amendment mm -hmm. that uh, Fire Chief approved the new driveway design before construction begins. John. A um, couple of questions. First, regarding the uh, uh, end of Becky's Cove Road, and I did notice, as Mr. Partridge pointed out, that there was an additional with added to the end of the road, mm -hmm. which would appear to allow a car to be perpendicular to Shore Road when they're coming in and out. Is that right? Um, well, it, it improves it. You're, the car would be perpendicular right at the edge. So it, it's, it's not, you, know, you're, you approach it and you can turn, but you've got about a car's width to get that turn in to, <clears> to get out. It's more, the concern for safety isn't necessarily getting out of the road, because once you get out there, you can see both directions, and you can be, like you mentioned, just about perpendicular to the road. It's more when you're coming in from town center and trying to make this tight turn. Even though there's gravel here, it doesn't, it doesn't help you negotiate that inside radius. And are there others that use Becky's Cove Road? Um, currently, the road is used to access uh, the Dunham slot here, and I believe the Strouds use it sometimes. They have built, a, I don't know, in the last few years, they've built an actual access, another driveway out into Shore Road. So 
it's my understanding that they generally use that access on the shore road, um, but Frank does use this um, access down here um, to, for, uh, for storage and getting to it. So he, they do use both, point, both access points, um, and Frank does own that road, correct? So it's really Frank, the Dunhams, and the Partridges currently. Now, just to get to your first point, um, I wasn't on the planning board when this plan was, was approved, mm -hmm. but were you suggesting somehow that the plan was presented with the driveway as two options? It seemed to me that the plan was approved with the driveway where it is now. This plan was presented to the board as our site plan. Um, we noted that it was conceptual house and driveway location. As I mentioned, Peter Nastas sort of assumed that someone building lot one, you know, that they may want to use Becky's Cove Road so they can reduce the amount of driveway they'd actually have to build. So he wanted to make sure that that was going to be provable. But he also wanted to make sure that lot one would have the ability to have a driveway go out into Shore Road. That's what the deed, co the deed covenants reflect um, for lot one, as well as lot two. I mean, it's obvious that lot two can only go off of there. But, you know, Peter was mindful that, you know, he wanted to make sure that that option was available. So the subdivision plan was approved without prohibiting access to Lot 1 on a shore road. I mean, this was the way we brought it to the board, but that wasn't necessarily the only option that would be approvable. I think also we need to point out that the building envelope or Lot 1, you right. could have built this house anywhere in here, which we could have put it right in the middle of this field if we wanted to. There was a discussion during um, the approval process you know, that, that neighbors, the Dunham's Strouds, had concerns about development in the field, and um, you know, that, I think, led to, it, you know, at the minimum, getting this open space along the shore road, and there were suggestions, of, you know, I believe it was Tom Emery who mentioned, you know, well, you know, we can suggest to, you know, the developer that you know, that the, the lot be developed with those things in mind, which is in fact what they did, but there was no restriction on saying that they can't build there, they can't build a swimming pool, they can't build a tennis court. I mean, there was, those things were mentioned as people's concerns, but there was no restrictions placed on that lot that would, pr would have prevented that. Amy, I just want to say, this was the, this was the view or the diagram that was approved. Yeah, this is the approved subdivision plan. These were, came later in the conceptual well, they were, they were used together. This was the approved subdivision plot that was signed um, that denotes the billing envelopes and the note that reflects the deed covenants, which had the restrictions. Um, but it did allow for access to the lot, utility access, and maintenance of the general open space along the entire lot one and lot two stretch. This was the site plan that was used um, to, we had labeled site distances on here and showed conceptually where houses and, and and driveways could go. But, but the plan as a whole was approved with a conservation easement going across Shore Road at the right. front of their property, correct? Right? Across Lot 1 and Lot 2, right. correct. But that conservation easement did allow for access, vehicular access, utility, installation, and maintenance of dead disease, you know, vegetation, and, you know, addition, good landscape management practices. David? Amy, I have one question that concerns me, I just as a clarification. Are the utilities underground? Yes, they are. Util currently, the utilities for water service comes in here at the stub, and they come into the house. Um, the leach field is here um, with systems that come through with pumps that have been installed, um, and electricity, I believe, is right along the road as well. Yeah, all utilities were installed underground, and that was required. Okay. Thank you. Further questions or comments from the board? David? Can I make a motion? Go right ahead, please. A motion for the board to consider, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted <coughs> and the facts <coughs> presented, the application of John and Ann Partridge for an amendment to the previously approved Zeb Cove subdivision located on Shore Road <coughs> to move the driveway access for Lot 1 from Becky's <coughs> Cove Road to Shore Road be approved with the following conditions. That the approval of the driveway entrance uh, 
be received um, on the design from the Public Works Director that silt protection during construction be maintained, that driveway access application uh, be reviewed by the fire chief for access of the fire equipment, and return the original driveway area to the original condition. Is there a second on the motion proposed? Question first. <coughs> Mr. Parker. Um, when the partridges go to uh, Director of Public Works to get a driveway, <coughs> uh, will this will that necessitate review by the fire chief or not? You, I think you said it was just site distance. Yeah, I said no. The fire chief would not normally review those. Karen. Question, if the fire chief did come back and say, gee, 18 feet is really what we need, um, would this come back to the planning board? Would they have to resubmit an amended application? Because then I want to know, well, if it has to be that much wider, how much, how much more vegetation is going to have to be cut down to accommodate that? Um, it's, it's a process question. Could you answer that for us, Maureen? Well, it really depends on how you word the condition. If, if you say that it requires approval of the fire chief, and you want him to be able to change it, we can do it that way. If you're saying that this has to have, a, you know, that they have to get approval or you want it to come back to you, we can treat it that way. Quite frankly, absent any comment from the board, my feeling would be that it would have to go to the fire chief, and if he doesn't approve it, it has to come back to the board. So if, if he required 18 feet in order to get approval, that's what they would have to do. If they didn't want to do that, they would have to come back to the board? No. Okay. No. I, 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 I really believe that the, when the board approves plans, they need to be approving what they have in front of them um, with specific conditions. And if you're saying that um, you're, you'll approve it subject to review and approval by the fire chief and you make it clear that you want him to be able to change it, then you can do that. But if all you'd say is review by the fire chief and he says, I need a change, then you know, he's changed to planning board approval and you don't know about that. And I, I would be concerned about that as a process. Um, so I would prefer, it, it, absent any comment from you, I'm going to take the more conservative interpretation that either he's happy with the way you've approved it or it comes back to you. Mr. Chair. Mark. Um, I'd like to step back one step from that, uh, just from my uh, viewpoint, I'm kind of wondering uh, where a private lot driveway width requirement shows up in our ordinance. Uh, subdivision ordinance is full of street requirements. If you don't have street frontage so a fire truck can get to your house, then the fire chief has the right in the ordinance to make the equivalent of a street go up to your front door. But if you have the frontage in your lot conforms to the requirements of subdivision, it's my impression of the ordinance, uh, that basically whatever you offer the fire chief is, uh, is out of your own interest to have adequate protection for your house. And it appears that the applicant is trying to allow a fire engine to turn around and invite the fire engine down into the lot. And I think that's very, very good idea. Uh, but I, again, it doesn't seem to be something that's required by the ordinance. It would be something that would be uh, an interpretation on the part of this board as uh, providing equivalent health, safety, and welfare uh, in its interpretation, or so it seems. I'd just like to offer that as a comment. Thank you. As always, Mark always has the best interpretation of our audiences. He bails us out of trouble quite often. <laughs> David. It appears that maybe uh, I could revise my motion and delete the approval of the fire chief from that motion would be more satisfactory to the rest of the board. <clears throat> so I may, may I do that? It was your motion, sir. You may. <laughs> I would uh, move that uh, we strike that. Uh, approval by the fire chief. 
Could you read the, the remaining conditions once again? The remaining, uh, I believe I stated that um, that it, the driveway entrance would have the approval of the public works director, that the silt protection uh, be installed during construction, and that the return of the existing present driveway, uh, or that the return ex area of the existing present driveway to the conditions uh, prior to construction. I'll second that motion as, re as revised. Thank you, Steve. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion of the motion before us? Well, I guess I'll just say that I, I'm going to vote against the motion, and Mr. the Partridges probably should understand why, at least I'm going to vote against it. Um, a couple of reasons. It appears to me that the, the original plan was proposed with the driveway as it is now. Part of that plan uh, took into consideration where the driveway was proposed and specifically created the conservation easement where the driveway would go now. Again, I believe for a reason, the site distance for both uh, drives, the old one and the proposed one, are pretty much the same. The uh, cars have an ability to be perpendicular to Shore Road. Again, I assume that all of this was taken into account in the existing application in terms of the safety of exiting Becky's Cove Road, which is used by, by others as well. Uh, and there was, from what I understand, additional concern about the development or the disturbance of the field, which also went into creating the conservation easement. Uh, Finally, we are under an obligation, as I understand it, with any development that comes before us to try to minimize curb cuts and accesses onto major roads. And we would be adding a curb cut next to, very close to two other curb cuts. Um, on balance, I believe that the original application was approved as a whole for a reason, not with the option of allowing another driveway and another curb cut through the conservation easement and onto Shore Road. So given the balancing of all those factors, um, I would have to vote against, against the motion. Thank you, John, for your explanation. Further comments from the board? Hearing none, I'd like to call a motion for a vote. Those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Those opposed? Two oppositions. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you have any further questions, please contact Maureen. Mr. Chair. Mr. Wilcox. Uh, at this point, I would like to excuse myself for consideration of the next item. Go right um, ahead. In light of my uh, proximity to the development and uh, questions as to uh, my comfort level with being put on the park. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I have to recuse myself from this next one. I have a business relationship with the applicant. Very well. What? I couldn't hear you. I have a business relationship with the applicant. Okay. With Nancy's approval, you're allowed to step down. <laughs> <laughs> we still have a quorum, so we will continue. We don't have this. We don't have this. Next item on the agenda is the Whaleback Ridge Subdivision. Fitzpatrick Associates are requesting preliminary subdivision review 
and a resource protection permit for the six lot Whaleback Ridge subdivision located off Old Ocean House Road under section 16-2-4 preliminary subdivision review completeness and section 19-8-3 resource protection permit completeness. Owen, would you like to take a minute and review and spend any time you want on those new items since our last workshop meeting? I, I would indeed. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for hearing us tonight. Uh, my name is Owens McCullough. I'm a civil engineer with the firm of Sebago Technics here tonight on behalf of Fitzpatrick Associates. Uh, Joel Fitzpatrick and Kelly Fitzpatrick are here also uh, if the board has any questions. Uh, we certainly appreciated the board taking time to meet with us at a workshop meeting and to go on the site walk. I think that was very helpful to us and hopefully to the board in developing the design for this project. Uh, since we were uh, at the site walk, we've developed the uh, more detailed subdivision plans and engineered drawings, uh, which are before you tonight for consideration. Uh, the project uh, now has a name. Uh, the applicants would like to call it Wellback Ridge Subdivision. And I believe that is because uh, there's, well back, there's a Wellback Ridge uh, shoal or something along the coastline and uh, they like the name and decided to ch choose that. Uh, we're here tonight uh, for a major subdivision approval um, under the open space zoning along with resource protection permit uh, under the capable of the zoning ordinance requirements. Uh, the project entails a six lot subdivision. One of the lots, lot one, is actually an existing lot. Uh, it's uh, referred to as a parsonage. It's a white uh, cape. Uh, with a garage on it. That, uh, that existing house will actually sit in a setback uh, that we create when we put in the right-of-way requiring that the applicant either move the house or uh, modify the house to remove the small area that's encroaching in the setback. At this time he hasn't decided which way to go, whether to pick the house up and move it uh, or remove the end of the house that's in the setback. Uh, he's still evaluating that and hope to resolve that before we come back for final approval. Uh, the project's located on the old Ocean House Road and it's right at, the proposed entrance is right across from the Trundy Point Road. The total parcel area is 11.2 acres in size and is situated in the Residence A district. Um, as part of the project, as I indicated, there'll be some open space. The open space areas are indicated in the darker green uh, on the subdivision plan here and here. There are two open space areas totaling uh, 5.3 acres in size. The lots uh, will range in size from about 33,000 square feet up to 52,800 square feet in size. There will be access through a 600 foot uh, roadway which we had flagged in the field and had a chance to walk with the planning board. Uh, it's going to include uh, a paved roadway with curbing each side, uh, underground utilities to include uh, telephone, electric cable, and public water. Uh, we're also proposing a sidewalk along this side of the roadway here which would come down partway and stop with a crosswalk that would come over to a proposed trail uh, that will go through, or a footpath, I should say, that would go through the open space areas. Um, also, uh, sewer service for the project would be served by individual on-site septic systems, uh, which were included in the uh, design package submitted to you. And Maureen handed me a memo from the uh, code enforcement officer. I guess he's taken a look at them. And, uh, they meet the ordinance requirements. When we walked the site, one of the things that, uh, a couple of things we looked at, uh, one was uh, a wetlands alteration that we're going to need to do as part of the uh, project that's right in the middle of the road here. It was that depressional isolated area on the site. Uh, the wetlands were flagged by Mark Hampton Associates and we also brought down the Army Corps of Engineers. And, uh, it didn't go in your original packet, but Maureen, I think, in, included it in the staff memo that went around to the board. So they walked it, uh, confirmed the wetland areas. Uh, the total wetland impact is about 3,000 square feet. And again, it'll be limited to that depressional area that we looked at during the site walk. Also, as part of the project, we're going to propose an integrated storm drainage system, which is 
already uh, been under review by the town engineer. Uh, we actually met with him on site and had a separate meeting at his office bringing him on board early in the process as part of the design. One of the things we're very careful to look at uh, was the June Eisling property when we walked it. Um, that's her property here. There was uh, some drainage that comes down through the back of her property and there was she was concerned that we make sure we don't dam that uh, drainage up or affect it in some way that would be adverse to her property. So what we want to do we're going to have catch basins and a storm drain that's going to go down to a detention pond on this end of the site which is much lower than her property. We're going to put a culvert over to her property at that existing drainage swell to make sure we pick up the drainage coming off of her property and then route it through our system to the detention pond. Uh, we did go through a formal uh, analysis of it, submitted all the calculations to the town engineer for review and we are sensitive to that and appreciated her walking it with us uh, to take a look at that. Also as part of the project uh, coming in on the entrance road, uh, we will be planting uh, street trees as required by the ordinance and the applicant uh, will be meeting with uh, June Island again uh, before we come back for final to talk about buffering along her property line. She has a row of I guess it's uh, pines or hedges along there and those will be maintained but we're going to look at any additional buffering that, that might be appropriate for that and I think Joel placed a call into her and I see her here tonight so maybe Joel can get together with you June before we come back walk it make sure that something reasonable is proposed. Um, also, as part of the uh, project, we are requesting two waivers for the board to consider. Uh, one of the waivers is a request to um, go with the scale of the subdivision plan, one inch equals 60 feet in lieu of one inch equals 40 feet. If we go with one inch equals 60, that allows us to put the subdivision on one plan for recording at the Registry of Deeds. I think we talked about that briefly at the workshop meeting. The second waiver request is uh, item 24 of the major subdivision requirements of community impact analysis. Uh, the uh, community impact assessment applies to major subdivisions of five or more lots. Uh, this project, uh, the intent, excuse me, the intent is to measure the impact of new developing lots on municipal facilities for lot for subdivisions five or more. Uh, while the total number of the lots is six for this project, uh, one of the lots has already developed uh, lot one and through here so uh, the town has actually already realized the impact on municipal facilities from that lot because it's a pre-existing lot it's been there for a number of years and that results in really only five lots uh, for the subdivision so that's the basis of asking the board for waiver consideration for that item the packets that were submitted and passed out to the board include reduced size copies of all the subdivision plans that shows the road layout, uh, the design of it. Again, I mentioned it was about 600 feet. It'll have public water, underground electric and telephone services. I know Joel has talked with the fire uh, department and there is actually a hydrant shown on the plan. I think, Joel, why don't you speak to the fire chief? Oh, yeah. He saw the plan. Uh, he wants a fire hydrant within the subdivision. We actually do have one up near the uh, called it, or near the Hammerhead turnaround. We'll need to make sure that that's an appropriate location for him um, and that that works as part of the project. Uh, with that said, uh, we're here tonight to uh, have you look at the plan for completeness and hopefully schedule a public hearing for the uh, July meeting. And with that, we'll answer any questions the board may have. Thank you. Just as a forward to the board, we first have to work on a finding of completeness before we can enter into general discussion of the plan and questions of Owen. So questions and comments from board members regarding completeness of this application? Yeah, Owen, I guess I didn't follow you. You're, you're saying that because one lot is already there, the community impact statement isn't necessary because it's under what's required without that one lot. It sounds to me like it's That's still correct. five or more, right? 
It's more than five lots, so the sixth lot actually kicks in the community impact analysis. Yeah, it's not five, because you said five or more. I want to make, I'll make sure I understand that correctly with Maureen. It, it's, it's more than five lots. Yeah, the, the distinction between a major subdivision and a minor subdivision is more than five lots is a major subdivision unless you're also dedicating a major public facility. Because you said five or more, so I was... I'm so, I, yeah, that's incorrect, more than five lots. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Hearing no further comments, may I have a motion in regards to completeness or incompleteness? I move. Karen? Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Fitzpatrick Associates for preliminary subdivision review and a resource protection permit for the proposed six lot Whaleback Ridge subdivision located off Old Ocean House Road be deemed complete. Is there a second, second to be made? Thank you, Nancy. Any further discussion on the matter of completeness before the board? Hearing none, all those in favor of this motion on completeness, please signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. The application is deemed complete. Uh, based on the information we received tonight in regards to some of the comments we made at workshop, uh, is there a further need for another scheduled sidewalk? Seeing none, that matter is taken care of. Any objections to a public hearing at our next meeting? At this time, we'll open it up for general discussion before we make that last motion. Nancy. Um, I seem to remember at the site walk that you talked about moving the house on Old Ocean House Road. Are you still thinking that? That is still under consideration, uh, Joel. Um, the, there's about a, I guess it's about five foot, a little more than five foot encroachment into this side setback. And Joel's thinking about moving the entire house over so it's out of the setback yeah. encroachment. Um, because that it's only a few feet, um, he may elect to remove that end of the house and do other, <coughs> excuse me, do other exterior modifications to the house. Um, instead of moving the whole house. It, it, it's a function of um, how, <coughs> excuse me, how difficult it is to move it off the foundation. So, Want some water? I'm, I have a frog in my throat, I think. I'm okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Um cool. So you are going to observe the side setback from the road. I'm just not sure whether we're going to move it or modify the exterior at this point. It's not very tall. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions of the applicant from other board members? Just as a point of curiosity, Owen, is, is that um, walkway, is that just going to be public access so that people other than the, the owners of the lots can walk through that property? Well, the intent of the open space is that the open space would be owned um, in fee by, I believe, the uh, six lot owners. So they each have a one-sixth fee interest in the, uh, in the open space. So they'd actually own it. And I don't know that we've uh, really discuss whether it would be dedicated as part of the public and, and I'm not now that I think of it Maureen I'm not sure in that open space zoning um, if it was worded that it has to be open to the public or if it could be um, deeded in fee interest to each of the landowners somebody will have to pay taxes on it <laughs>
There's nothing that requires it to be available to anyone but the owners of the lots in the subdivision. The way I, I understood it was, I, but this is me talking, okay, uh, I thought that we were deeding it to the town. Oh, you can if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you and Kelly agree. <laughs> I always thought that we were deeding all the open space to the town and they were going to uh, agree, maybe be part of the green belt, but whatever, whatever works. I have a question though, Maureen. Uh, is this overall lot anywhere near some of the missing links of our Greenbelt plan? Uh, this is open space in a part of town where we really don't have any publicly owned open space. Okay. Um, so, it, I mean, especially because of the way the applicants configured it, it could very easily become a Greenbelt link in this part of town. Um, but, and, and, and I have encouraged the applicants that ownership by the town would, would, would be the preference. However, the applicant is not required to deed this to the town. They are required to permanently preserve it as open space. Perhaps a good compromise, uh, Joe and Kelly, is to uh, uh, map out a trail and just make a public easement. And then the lot owners could retain uh, joint ownership of the green area. Just as one further idea. Go ahead, Nancy. Um, people could go access the green belt and turn left and go up and go along the edge out to um, Old Ocean House Road again. Mm -hmm. What is the nature of that strip on the far right? Is that uh, a right of way or? It's actually part of the land. It's actually under fee ownership. It's part of the land um, of 11.21 acres. But at one point, I believe it was thought that that might be a point of access, but it's within that 250 foot RP1 uh, wetland setback, so a road could not go in through there. That's why it wasn't pursued. But how about the trail? Um, the trails, I believe, are allowed within that setback. I think we, so a trail could go within. In fact, all of those trails are within, the, the, the footpath is within the 250 foot setback. Where is Elwive Brook in relation to that green strip? Um, Elwive Brook comes through oh, it, here. Oh, yeah. So we don't actually abut Elwive Brook. Yeah. If, if it would be appropriate uh, between now and we come back for the public hearing, we could certainly take a look at how we'd want to handle the open space. If it was to be given to the town, it would have to go to council, is that correct, with a, a letter of intent to... Um, because this is a major subdivision, there's a two-step approval process for it. Uh, this, this subdivision has to come to you and get preliminary subdivision approval and then it has to come back for final subdivision approval and the final subdivision approval is really kind of a phase where you dot the I's and cross the T's where you make sure the deeds are in place and um, those types of issues. Typically what happens with the major subdivision is in between preliminary subdivision approval and final subdivision approval the applicant approaches the town council with a conceptual plan like the one uh, that's on the board right now and says uh, we are proposing to donate the following facilities to the town as part of our subdivision and if they accept it and it's a condition what the, it's what the council what the council would grant is called conditional municipal approval um, and really what it is is it functions as a check because the, the, only the council can accept facilities on behalf of the town and, and it's a good way to make sure that the planning board and the council are in sync in terms of the kind of facilities you're requiring and what you, you think the town's going to want and then the council gets to nod that they, they basically agree with the concept uh, and then if the applicant comes back for final approval and, and uh, let's say they want to donate the land and they're going to provide a right-of-way deed for the road um, after they get planning board approval 
at some future date they would go to the council and the council would actually formally accept these things. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. um, I just had a quick question, Owen. I, I know I could probably find it going through the plan. I'm looking at the subsurface wastewater disposal applications, but can you just point out generally where the septic systems are going to be on these lots? Um, See, uh, lot five, I believe, is over in here. Uh, lot four, I think, is down in through here. The same with lot three and lot two, and also lot six, because uh, I think Mark designed them as gravity systems and found uh, passing soils on the downhill sides of the lots. It's the only one that uh, I believe lot five. In fact, I just looked at that before we got up here. I think it's going right here in that area because there is a ledge obviously there's a ledge area here so he had to look for soils below that ledge and okay. uh, yeah they're all down great so towards the back of the box yes sir. Further comments from the board? David? I would just like to make one comment and then uh, I'll make a further motion. As a taxpayer, I'd like to give you my comments and that is that I'd rather see that land be on the tax rolls than in the town on it. Get a little revenue from it. Uh, but I'd like to further the motion that the application uh, be tabled to the regular July 18th, 2000 meeting of the planning board at which time a public hearing shall be held. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Nancy. Is there further discussion of the motion? Before I call for a vote on the motion, uh, there's been a great deal of interest uh, by abutters and I believe the applicant and staff have uh, been working closely together. I just urge the abutters if any concerns or general support for the issue has come up, uh, please make a point to write us again. Uh, we do feel your letters are important to us in our decision making process and the best way to communicate with the planning board is by writing a letter to Maureen and because she copies all of us it becomes part of the application packet mm -hmm. and it also gives the applicant uh, ample time to respond uh, to your concerns if there are any and uh, I thank you for your letters you've been mailing to us all along and uh, your input at the site walk we had a way back uh, further the swoops okay okay David did make that his motion he did I just want to in addition to all the letters and correspondence okay you are holding a public hearing until I can There will. Thank you. Right when, when she whispers in my ear, I can't hear her sometimes. Uh, <laughs> the public hearing will be on July 18th at our regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I yes. could real quick. I, I went back to the soils logs, and I need to stand corrected with John for just a second. Um, a couple of these lots do happen towards the front. And if it's helpful, I can, yeah, if it's helpful with a preliminary plan, I can short it, show on a plan where those systems are if you'd prefer. Okay, I'll find it. Find okay, it. thanks. But those two are towards the front. Okay. Thank you. Hearing no further comments, the motion has been made and seconded. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you to the app. <laughs> if there's nothing further to come before the board, the <laughs> chair stands in need of a motion to adjourn. I move. Thank you, David. Thank you, Karen. Those in favor of adjournment, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Good night, everyone, and thank you.